I really want to cover a lot of things about you. Uh, and you, after you dropped out of college and started the company with six other co-founders, was it? Was it four, five co-founders? Um, yeah, well, so, so what, what, happened, what happened there is uh, I, I was in university when, when the, the Facebook platform was released. And so I got really excited about it. And so the first day it came out, I, I went and I, I built an app as quickly as I could. Um, and I put something up the first day the platform was released. And I was just interested in connecting people to play games, actually. And um, a lot of people don't know this story, but there was, uh, at the time, the Nintendo Wii had these, these friend codes, which were like a very long telephone number that you could share with your friends so that you can play a Wii game with them. But it was very difficult to share these numbers. So mm. I just made a very simple application on Facebook where you could put in your friend code number, and then you could see all the friend code numbers of all the other people who are your friends on Facebook. So you could very easily come them on uh, the Nintendo Wii. And, um, you know, Mark Pincus, the, the CEO of Zynga, he reached out to me and just said, hey, this is, this is really interesting. You know, like, uh, why don't we go build some social apps together? And that was sort of how mm. things got started. Um, and the first app we went and built was a, was a poker app because at that time, Facebook was, was all college students. And, you know, uh, right. the college students in the US loved poker at the time, myself included. Um, so that was that was sort of what, what got everything started. Oh, wait. So that was when Facebook was not public for um, people like, you know, older than college students. So it was only for college students, Facebook at the time. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure the exact time that Facebook switched over and, and started adding other people in the U.S. Mm -hmm. um, but like the platform was was right around the same time. Yeah. So even if they had already opened it up, it was like still majority college students. I can't remember the exact timing. Ah, I see. That, that's why it was like a really good kind of marketing tool or platform for you guys, right? Making games for Facebook users. Well, and that's, and that's kind of the idea, which is like, what, are, what was the right and the perfect thing to make for those, for those people who are using Facebook at the time? So rather than this idea of going and making a company that would eventually be about making games for everybody, um, mm -hmm. you know, really this, this smaller idea of what do college students want to do with each other? And at that time, it was play focus. <laughs> And then once we did that, we built that experience and we realized when we played it, wow, this is, this is very different from, uh, from any experience we've had playing poker online before. Um, having the real names and the real photos and connecting with your friends automatically, this is a different experience. And then so mm -hmm. after that, this is a whole new type of game. We've got to go do this with as many different types of games as we can. Um, and, and so like, I think that a lot of these, these ideas, you know, they start small. So. Of course, we always had like big aspirations to build a, a larger company, um, but we, we started by experimenting and then we sort of figured out what worked and went from there. Right. And that really worked, right? So um, you launched the, the best known game, which was, I think, Firm Bill uh, on Facebook in June 2009, and it reached 10 million daily users uh, within six weeks. That's a that's a pretty good uh, viral goals that you had, right? What, what would you say was the, you know, the viral goals uh, driver? Was it just Facebook advertising, Facebook platform, or what, what else was, was there, would you say? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that there were just, there were a lot of things happening at once that were new um, mm. back. Then. So like w one was this idea of a new business model. Before, before that time, all games were paid for up front. And it was something where you went to the store and you spent $50 and you got a game. And the only thing you knew about that game was what you read in a video game magazine and the reviews that you saw and what you, the commercial you watched and the movie poster that you saw hanging on the, the, the wall in the store. And um, we took that model and we basically said, no, you can try it for free. Um, and then you can play as long as you want. And, uh, and then if you like it, you can also invite your friends and you can also spend money if you want. And if you don't want to, that's also fine. Um, the thing about making it free is like that opened up this idea that you could play with anyone because if I wanted to play a game with you, but I also had to convince you to spend $50 on the game, well then that's, that's very high friction. Um, right. and so the business model enabled it to be social. And then when it's social, then we could actually redesign the whole game to be something that wasn't really something you, you could play by yourself. So if you think about it, like the games that you, you would buy for the console, they had to have a single player mode because um, you know, in most situations, you didn't have a friend over to play with. Um, but the games that you played online, we thought the default should be should be social. It should be something you can do with somebody else. Um, and so when you look at a game like Farmville, um, the, the, it's, it's not like one single thing that we did. It's sort of a combination of, of that realization and then 
how do you take these these new business models and these this new distribution through the social channels um, in this this new experience where people can just land on a page and play a game um, and then builds a space that people want to spend time with each other in it. And so um, Farmville was like sort of in a lot of ways um, this this the first time that, that it was easy to with your friends go and like hang out in a virtual space that didn't require you to be there um, at the same time. It wasn't like a live virtual world. It was very casual. Build your space, let your friends visit. You go visit your friends. And um, we learned a lot from the games we released before Farmville to to understand you know what what players wanted and and to to basically have a really good idea of how to build that game in a way that people would enjoy and so even though um farmville was really the moment that our, our company became famous for like the broader sort of technology community uh by the time that we had released farmville like zynga already had many games that were very large for, for like these other players. And um, we just weren't really talking about it more more broadly yet. Mm, I see. What, what were those other games? Was it like a Zynga Poker or Friend with Two, a Words with, Word with Friends 2 or those games you were talking about? Yeah, I mean, the, early, the earliest, the first game was, was Zynga Poker. And so um, I, I was the original engineer on Zynga Poker. And, um, oh, really? <laughs> I'm the product manager behind like the initial, initial design. Um, I, and that game is still very, um, still very popular today. And that was the first game that we built at the company. Mm. Um, so like, actually, um, that was years before Farmville. Right. And so we had a game called Mafia Wars that was very big. There was a game called Yoville that was very big. It was the largest virtual world in the world at the time. Um, so it, from each one of these games, we sort of learned another set of things about what types of things that people wanted to do when they were playing with their friends. Um, and we just kept sort of building on it with each new new game that we would release.